Hi folks, welcome back to the shop. I was on Quora today, Quora, however you say that, and a guy on there asked what the difference was, why we use slip rings on an alternator and not on a generator. And I thought, hey, wait a minute, I happen to have a generator I could take apart and an alternator I could take apart and show the difference. What a great topic for a video. So I'm gonna try and do this kind of fast and nasty. If I lose my train of thought or flub a line, I'm not gonna stop and edit it out. I'm just gonna do this and throw it online and you guys can enjoy it in its whatever its raw form <laughs> comes out to being. Okay, so the first thing we need to look at is actually how these two different things work. Both of these devices make electricity by spinning, turning, moving a wire through a station, through a magnetic field, not necessarily a stationary magnetic field. Now in the old school generator, which I just happen to have laying around, what we actually have is our loop of wire that's actually doing the moving is on what's called the armature, this thing here. And the loop of wire goes from one commutator segment up around back around and eventually comes back down to the commutator se commutator segment on the other side so we have a loop of wire which i probably should have made a loop of wire hey look at this ha ha a loop of wire so we've got a loop of wire and we're spinning that loop of wire through a stationary magnetic field and that's how your generator works now the thing about this is that the electricity induced in this loop of wire is actually alternating current because if you look in here, you'll see field windings and these are stationary. When the generator's being, you know, generating electricity, there's a small amount of current put through these two electromagnets, which creates a magnetic field that is stationary that goes across this space. And the loop of wire, which is over here on our armature, is spinning inside that magnetic field. Now, if you think about that, on one side, we're gonna have a North Pole, the other side be a South Pole. It could be reversed, it doesn't matter. Well, if we look at this side of the wire, as it's turning through the magnetic field, well, this side is close to the North Pole. Then when it gets down to where it's 180 degrees, it's toward the South Pole. So what's actually happening is this is actually creating alternating current in the loop of wire. Now, the reason we use a commutator on a generator and not on a alternator, we're gonna to get to all how that works in a minute, is the really cool thing that happens here is that as this loop of wire turns around, the commutator, because of course we've got brushes on either side of the commutator, here's what they look like, they rub on the commutator, um, and they're 180 degrees apart. Well, the commutator effectively switches changes the way this loop of wire is connected to our output circuit. Because see here we have, this is our post on this where our positive is, and the ground is the negative, just like on typical automotive stuff. And so what we're actually doing is the loop of wire is going this way, and then we connect it backwards, and then it's going this way, and we connect it backwards. So what's actually happening is we're mechanically rectifying the AC induced in this coil into DC at the brushes. Because what happens is essentially, if our, if our two field coils are well, right there and right there, one side of the commutator is positive and the other side of the commutator is negative. So as that's spinning, those brushes are literally mechanically turning the alternating current in our, in our coil, in our loop, into direct current at the brushes. It's pretty cool, it has a couple disadvantages. One is that you can't spin it very fast, otherwise the wires come off the armature, which is why primarily cars have gone to alternators. Now, as far as the physics of this is concerned, generating electricity is caused by moving a wire through a magnetic field. It doesn't matter whether the wire's stationary and the magnetic field moves, or whether the, you know, um, I lost my train of thought, but we're going to get there. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, it doesn't matter if the magnetic, if the wire is stationary and the mag magnetic field moves, or whether the magnetic field is stationary and the wire moves. In this case, we have the wire moving and the magnetic field is stationary. In an alternator, it's the exact opposite. Literally, an alternator is like an inside-out generator. The rotor on an alternator is just one electromagnet, okay? And so... If you take these finger things off of here, what you've got is just a coil of wire that's wrapped 
around a core like this, okay? So when you put power to that winding, one end of this becomes north and the other end of it becomes south. And these fingers basically conduct the magnetic flux. So when this is energized, this is, I mean, of course, it, everything I'm saying can be either backwards or forwards. So let's say if this finger is a north pole, that finger will also be a north pole because it's connected to the north end of this coil or this electromagnet, and each one of these will be a south pole. So when you've got a piece of wire there, like in that stator, which we'll get to in a minute, as this rotates, you've got a south pole going past the wire, then a north pole, then a south pole, then a north pole, then a south pole. So you're introducing or inducing a alternating current in the wire. But in this case, the wire is stationary and the magnetic field is rotating. Now, seeing as we want the magnetic field to, uh, to have consistent polarity, we're feeding DC to that winding just like we're feeding DC to the field windings on your generator. So in both cases, you're feeding DC to your field winding. Here the field windings are, sta field windings are stationary. Here the field windings are rotating. So you use a slip ring, you know, and you're putting positive and negative to your slip ring. It doesn't matter which. And over here for your field winding, you're putting positive and negative, you know, DC to your field winding. Now your alternator and your generator are both regulated essentially the same way. They're regulated by um, controlling the amperage going through the field windings. The higher the amperage, the stronger the magnetic field, and the more electricity is generated by the part of the generator or alternator that generates the electricity. Now in the alternator, see here we have a stationary, um, basically a stationary armature. I mean, so in the alternator, this is the part that produces the power that we're taking off for a load. Whereas in the, and it's the part that doesn't spin. We've got this rotating field happening inside it. Just like if we took this wire, put an electric current through this wire, making an electromagnet, and then turning it inside of this stationary set of windings. Now this looks crazy complicated, and, but in reality it's not. What we really have here is we have three different sets of windings because this is a three-phase alternator, just like you'd find in a hydroelectric plant or a, a power plant. Um, those are all three-phase. Now, they, they get really fancy. They might have 12 different phases, but they're only pairing it off three phases at a time. And so here, if you look carefully, what you'll see is you'll see three lines that come out of this stator. And those three lines are, well, basically, one of the, each, these are each one phase. And if you look carefully, I found it earlier. Let's see if I can find it again. I forgot where it was. Basically, these three loops of wire are actually all tied together right here. Okay, so we've got three independent, well, not independent. They're all tied together, but we have three independent coils, all of which generate power. Now, in the alternator, we're generating alternating current in this external stator. And in this, what we're actually making is three-phase AC then this pack of diodes rectify that DC, uh, AC into being DC, which is exactly what the commutator on your old school generator does. But here we need electronics to make it work, whereas here we don't. It's just mechanical. Okay, so that's the difference. That's, what, that's why one uses slip rings and the other uses a commutator. That's really all there is to it. I know this was a fast and nasty video, and I've got more videos in the pipeline. I'm sorry I haven't been uploading nearly as much as I should have been. I've been going crazy on the solar organic rank and cycle steam engine project, which has, I've hit snags that took time to solve. That's why I haven't put up more videos on that lately. Hope you enjoyed this one. Hope this answers your questions. If you have any more questions, throw them in the, in the comments section. And uh, till next time, everybody take care. I hope your lives are going awesome. Cheers. Bye.